Hello, this is Andrew Perkins and this is part 6 in creating a blog using Ruby on Rails. In this video we're going to learn how to uh, create new posts. We'll be learning quite a few new topics such as creating forms, uh, redirecting users, uh, rendering views, and uh, displaying flash messages. So let's get started. Uh, this is our blog's index page for our posts controller. We're first going to want to add a link here to link to our post's new action, which is going to be used to display the form to add a new post. So let's, let's switch to our browser. We'll take a look at our post's controller. Here's the new action. This is going to be used to display a form so that someone can create a post. Uh, let's first edit the index page and create a link to this new action. So we'll open up our index view file and at the bottom I'll create a p tag and then I'm going to use the link to method to create a link. The linked text will say add a new post and now we want to link to our post controllers new action. If we recall from the routing video we have a named route to refer to the new action and that's called new post path and then we'll close our ERB tags. So here we've created a link called add a new post and it links to the new post path which is the uh, post controller's new action. Let's edit the new view file and we'll add an h1 tag here and we'll say add a new post and we'll save it and let's make sure our link works. So back in the browser we'll refresh the index page and here's our add a new post link and if we click it we can see that it takes us to the add a new post page that's posts slash new so now let's add a form on this page so we can actually uh, submit the post so we'll switch back to our text editor and we're going to look at our posts controller first so the new action displays the form that form requires an empty post object in order to create the new post so we need to send an empty post object to the view. So we'll create a post instance variable and we will assign a new empty post object to it. We'll save it. We now have access to this empty post object in our view file and our form can use that. So back into the new view, we're going to open up our ERB tags to output something and we're going to use a new method called form4. This method creates a form for us and what we pass to it is that empty post object that we sent. Uh, it also takes a block that's used for creating the form and then we need to end the block as well. So we now have access to this local f variable. You could name this whatever you would like. You could call it form if you want. I'm just going to call it f for short and we can use this to create some form fields for uh, entering a new post. So I'm going to create a p tag here and then I'm going to open up my ERB tags and I'm going to create a label tag for the title and then I'll create a, a line break here and then I'm also going to create a text field for the title as well. So we have a label for our title and we have a text field for our title. So we can duplicate this and we want to create one for our content. We need a label for the content and a field for the content. But we actually don't want just a plain text field. We want a text area for the content so that they can enter in as much content as they would like. Finally, we're going to create a submit button. So I'm going to paste it one more time and then delete the label and rather than a text field we're going to want a submit button and then we can also tell it what text should appear on the submit button so we'll say add a new post save it and we can go take a look at our form now we'll switch back to the browser we'll refresh the posts new page and there's our form it currently doesn't work uh, the form will try and submit to our posts create action, but our posts create action doesn't do anything yet. So let's fix that. We'll switch back to our text editor. And here's our posts controller. And here's the create action. 
when that form is submitted it's going to submit right to this action and we need to grab the form values that were submitted so we can use that and save it into the database uh, we need to put that inside of a post object and then save it so we'll create a instance variable called post we'll create a new post object and what we pass to it is the actual uh, post information that was submitted from the form and we can grab that through the params hash and we can grab that post information and now we have access to the post object and remember it has a save method we learned about the save method when we worked with the rails console a few videos back and that will save the post into the database uh, this save method will return true or false whether or not the save was successful so we can use it inside of a conditional and if it was successful we can give the user a success message and redirect them to a different page and if something went wrong we can redisplay the new page with the form and they can fill it back out and try again so we're going to say if post.save and then we'll use else and then we'll end the if statement so this is going this part of the if statement is if it was successfully saved and we're going to redirect the user back to the index page so we can use the redirect to method and we're going to redirect to the posts path if you recall from the routing video posts path is the named route for our index action we can also give the user a notice and let them know that their uh, post was successfully saved we do that by passing in a second parameter here it's a hash so we'll say we'll give them a notice of your post was saved and we'll save it and now we need to fill in the else part of the if else condition else is if the post was not able to be saved if it wasn't able to be saved we just want to render a page the page that we want to render is the new page because we want to display it to them again so that they can try and fill the form out and resubmit it and hopefully it saves this time so there we go it now works uh, this notice though is not being handled correctly yet uh, this is considered a flash message and we need to make sure that we're displaying flash messages so to display flash messages we need to edit the layout file we can find our layout under views layouts and we have application.html.erb and this is the layout that all of our views use uh, it contains our doc type the html head and body tags as well as the title and some style sheets and javascripts um, you can see this call to yield what this yield does is whatever code is inside of our view it is output in this location of our layout file so when someone accesses our index page whatever code is inside this index view is inserted right here in place of yield so what we want to do is right above it we want to make sure we're displaying those flash messages if at any point we give the user a notice we need to make sure that it displays in the browser and to do that we can open up our ERB tags and we have access to a flash hash and we can loop through that flash hash and pass it a block uh, we can access the key and the value of the hash and then we need to end the block as well uh, the key is what type of message it is in this case the type of message is a notice and the value is the actual message itself in this case it's your post was saved so up here we can create a p tag and we can just display the value of that flash message if there is one it'll loop through all of the different types of flashes and display that flash message to the user so we can save this so now we have both of our new and create actions filled out. We have a link going to the new page to display the form to create a post. And we actually have the form filled out as well here. The form is ready to be used. So let's give it a try. We'll switch to our browser. I'm going to refresh the page really quick. And let's add a post. So I'm going to say third post 
buttons, we'll add some content, and then when we hit the submit button, we should be redirected back to our index page, and we should get our flash message letting us know that it was successful. There we go. Here's our flash message. It says your post was saved, and there's our third post. Uh, something to keep in mind about flash messages is that they're only available for one request, so if we refresh this page, the flash message disappears. It only displays whenever there is a flash message, and it only displays one time. So uh, here's our third post. Let's view it. And we can see that our third post was inserted properly. So I hope you found this useful, and thank you for watching.